the performance of European and American countries in the rare earth sector. On the grand stage of global rare earth competition, European and American countries have always been important players. The United States, as a global technological and economic powerhouse, naturally has its own strategic layout in the rare earth sector. The U.S. itself possesses rich rare earth reserves, with its rare earth mines mainly located in California, Alaska, and other areas. However, since the 1990s, due to environmental pressures, mining costs, and various other factors, the U.S. gradually reduced domestic rare earth mining, instead importing large quantities of rare earths from China. Data shows that for a long time, over 80% of U.S. rare earth demand relied on imports, with China being its primary source. In recent years, however, with the intensification of global resource competition and trade friction between China and the U.S., the United States has begun to re-emphasize the development of its domestic rare earth industry. The U.S. government has introduced a series of policies to encourage domestic rare earth mining and processing. For example, the U.S. Department of Energy has invested significant funds in researching and developing rare earth mining and separation technologies, attempting to reduce reliance on Chinese rare earths. At the same time, the U.S. is actively cooperating with other countries to seek new rare earth supply sources. For instance, the U.S. maintains close cooperation with Australia's Linus Corporation, one of the few companies globally with large-scale rare earth separation capabilities. Through this cooperation, the U.S. has, to some extent, increased its rare earth supply channels. However, the development of the U.S. rare earth industry has not been smooth. Although the U.S. has made some progress in rare earth mining technology, it still faces numerous challenges in rare earth separation and deep processing. Rare earth separation is a complex and highly technical process, requiring substantial capital investment and specialized technical personnel. China possesses leading technology and a mature industrial chain in this field. In contrast, U.S. rare earth separation technology is not yet mature, and its costs are higher. This means that even if the U.S. extracts domestic rare earth ores, it often needs to transport them to China for processing and then import the finished products at high prices. This situation is difficult to fundamentally change in the short term. Looking at Europe, the EU countries also have a huge demand for rare earths, primarily used in high-end manufacturing such as electronics, automobiles, and energy. Similar to the US, Europe's own rare earth production is limited, with most relying on imports. The EU has been committed to promoting the diversification of rare earth supply by cooperating with countries in regions such as Africa and South America to develop local rare earth resources. For example, the EU also has an intention to cooperate with Greenland on rare earth development, attempting to reduce its reliance on Chinese rare earths through this approach. However, Europe also faces numerous difficulties in the development of its rare earth industry. On one hand, Europe is relatively behind in rare earth mining and processing technologies, lacking independent core research and development capabilities. On the other hand, Europe's efforts to promote rare earth projects are often limited by strict environmental regulations and public opinion. For example, some rare earth mining projects have been opposed by local residents due to potential environmental impacts, leading to slow progress or even stagnation. This makes Europe's path to diversifying its rare earth supply arduous. In contrast, China's advantages in the rare earth sector are even more evident. China not only possesses rich rare earth reserves but, more importantly, has mastered globally leading rare earth mining, separation, and deep processing technologies. China's rare earth industrial chain is complete, from upstream mining to midstream separation and smelting, and then to the downstream manufacturing of various rare earth products, all demonstrating strong competitiveness. Whether in terms of technological level, production costs, or product quality, China's rare earth industry leads European and American countries. This is why, despite continuous efforts by European and American countries to reduce their reliance on Chinese rare earths, it is difficult for them to achieve this in practice. In the global rare earth industry competition, China, with its technological and industrial advantages, occupies the top position in the value chain, becoming the dominant player in the global rare earth market. China's true. 
Code of Dominance in Rare Earths Many people might think that China's advantage in the rare earths sector primarily comes from its abundant resource reserves. After all, China's rare earth reserves account for a considerable proportion globally, and the Bayan Obio mine in Inner Mongolia is the world's largest single rare earth deposit. But in reality, China's true code of dominance in rare earths lies not in the deposits themselves, but in technology. In the global rare earth industrial chain, mining is merely the starting point. Transforming raw or into usable materials requires dozens of complex processes. And in this process, China holds 80% of the high-purity refining patents. This means that even if other countries possess rare earth mines, it is difficult for them to bypass China's technological patent barriers when processing raw or into high-purity rare earth materials. Japan's dilemma of low purity in rare earth recycling processes is a good example. Shinetsu Chemicals Waste Magnet Purification Technology has a recovery rate of less than 15% and a purity of only 95%, which is a world apart from China's 99.99% refining standard. This fully demonstrates that technology is the key factor determining a country's position in the rare earth industry. When the Western world discusses getting rid of Chinese rare earths, they often overlook an important fact. China has successfully transformed from a simple resource exporter to a setter of technical standards. In various stages of rare earth mining, separation, and smelting, China has formulated a series of strict technical standards and specifications, which are widely recognized and applied globally. This not only reflects China's leading position in rare earth technology, but also gives China the initiative and the global rare earth industry competition. Taking Japan as an example, if Japan cannot overcome rare earth purification technology, even if they successfully develop Greenland's mineral resources, they may ultimately still have to transport the raw materials to China for processing, and then purchase finished products like magnets at high prices. In this way, Japan would not only be unable to break free from its reliance on Chinese rare earths, but might instead fall into a more humiliating state of technological vassalage. In today's increasingly fierce global technology industry competition, technology is the core competitiveness. Whoever masters advanced technology will dominate the industry competition. China, with its strong technological strength in the rare earth sector, has built an insurmountable technological moat, which is the fundamental reason why China remains in a strong position in the global rare earth game. In the future development of the global technology industry, rare earths, as a critical strategic resource, will only become more important. Competition among countries in the rare earth sector will also intensify. For China, to maintain its leading position in rare earth technology, it must continuously increase R&D investment, encourage scientific and technological innovation, and cultivate more specialized technical talents. Only in this way can it continue to maintain its advantage in the global rare earth industry competition and provide a solid resource guarantee for China's technological progress and economic development. At the same time, China should also actively promote cooperation and exchange in the global rare earth industry, and under the premise of adhering to international rules, jointly explore sustainable rare earth development and utilization models with other countries making greater contributions to global technological development and environmental protection, the essence of the rare earth game. From Japan's attempt to break free from its reliance on Chinese rare earths through technological breakthroughs and supply chain adjustments, to the various strategies of European and American countries in the rare earth sector, we can clearly see that the essence of the rare earth game is a struggle for technological discourse power. In today's era, Technology has become the core force driving national development and international competition. Rare earths, as indispensable key raw materials in modern technology industries, are widely used in numerous high-end fields such as electronics, new energy, aerospace, and military. Whoever can master core technologies and resource advantages in the rare earth sector will dominate these critical technology industries, and consequently, gain discourse power in global technological development. While the samples of heavy rare earth free motor magnets developed by Japan's material company have, to some extent, alleviated the immediate crisis for Japanese automakers, in the long run, 
they cannot truly shake China's position at the top of the rare earth value chain. This is because the technology has obvious performance flaws and cannot achieve large-scale commercial application within the next decade. Japan's multi-pronged breakthrough strategy in the rare earth supply chain is also difficult to achieve substantial breakthroughs due to various realistic constraints. When Japan eagerly presented its desinicization blueprint to the United States, its technological limitations and strategic anxiety were already evident on Suzuki's halted production lines. This meticulously choreographed breakthrough drama, in the face of performance data and realistic technical and resource bottlenecks, will ultimately reveal its pie-in-the-sky nature.